It's not very exciting outside, and you have to wear your masks. And, but good morning, everyone. Good morning. Great to have you here for this uh, service where we're going to sing some carols. We're going to hear the nativity again, and our young people have been working really hard. They're now very expert movie stars, and they're nodding at me here. Uh, they're available afterwards for, um, for autographs if you wish to have one. Um, so we're looking forward to all of that. Just a couple of, of brief announcements, just to remind you that next weekend we have our in-person service on Christmas Day at half past ten, so we hope you'll come and join us for that. No in-person service next Sunday, okay? Instead, there will be an online service. We're going to record a special service this week, and it will be available from 11 o'clock on Boxing Day. You'll be able to tune in to Facebook uh, to YouTube or to our website and pick up that service next Sunday. Uh, today there is tea and coffee after the service, and we do ask you to be very careful as you make your way through for tea and coffee. Try and keep your social distancing, please, especially when you're in the hall with the coffee, because we understand you have to take your mask off to drink your coffee. It kind of affects the taste if you don't. But that's where we make ourselves most vulnerable. So please try and maintain the social distance uh, if at all possible. Uh, this will be the last of our fellowship times after church. We're going to take a little break uh, for the next few weeks just to see how things uh, shape up in our wider community. In terms of that, we encourage you please to uh, wear your masks when you're moving around the building, when you're in the building. Uh, keep your social distance. Use your hand sanitizer. And uh, I'm, I want to encourage you, if you haven't yet got your booster, go get your booster. Um, and the same mitigations that we're doing in church, follow those wherever you are. And whether you're gathering with big groups of family, and whether you're out and about in the, in the, uh, in the city doing your last-minute bits and pieces, 
keep yourself safe, and in that way you'll keep other people safe. We need to work together uh, to get over this next phase uh, of this variant. Thank you for your generosity. Uh, we were able to send off to Storehouse over 300 tubes of Pringles, so thank you very much for that. Over 100 selection boxes went to the Belfast City Mission, so thank you so much for your generosity. You're going to make a big difference to the lives of lots of other people. And we can continue to make a difference uh, by our contributions to World Development Appeal. And if you haven't yet um, returned uh, an envelope, then please do. Uh, there are envelopes available uh, in the vestibule. Thank you for your generosity throughout the year. And thank you for your commitment and your loyalty and your support here in Stormont. We value it very much indeed. We are a family. And without you, we wouldn't be a family. So thank you for all the ways in which you have encouraged and supported and played your part. This is the, the fourth Sunday in Advent, and that's traditionally the angel candle. The angels are God's messengers who announce the coming of the Lord. The angel Gabriel spoke to Mary and Joseph to announce the birth of Jesus. And the angels sang out with joy to proclaim Jesus' birth to the shepherds. The angel Michael announced the coming of Christ again in the revelation to John. And we hear angel voices even today and wait with joy for Jesus. Here's how Luke records the angels and their role in the Christmas story. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom He favors. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, let Your angel voices call us now that we may receive the good news of great joy. And may that joyful good news of Jesus and His coming to Bethlehem change our lives and give us hope for when He comes again in power. We ask this and pray this in His name. Amen. I'm going to invite you now as we stand to sing together and keep your masks on for this as well, please. It came upon a midnight clear. Let's stand. Let's worship.
I'm going to ask you to sit back, look at the screen, and enjoy Jam and the Nativity video. A long, long time ago, in a land far away, an angel came from heaven with something special to say. The angel came to see Mary, who would soon be Jesus' wife, to share some special news that would forever change her life. The angel Gabriel sent from God said Mary would have God's son and she were to call him Jesus. She was the chosen one. Mary couldn't quite believe it. I wonder if it's true. But realised she was special as a baby inside her grew. Mary and Joseph were called away. A census was to be taken. And with the baby nearly due, they were feeling rather shaken. They travelled many miles to a town so far away, all the way to Bethlehem, getting more tired by the day. The donkey carried Mary along the dusty road, the donkey getting weary, carrying a heavy load. They couldn't wait to reach the town and finally get some rest. Their long and tiring journey had really been a test. They had to find a place to stay so Mary could rest her head. But Bethlehem was busy and they couldn't find a bed. They knocked on the doors around the town but were always turned away, searching high and low for a place where they could stay. Everywhere was full, what were they going to do? But then one helpful innkeeper said, I might have room for you. A space was in the stable, a bed made out of hay, but Mary and Joseph were happy. At last, they had somewhere to stay. Jesus was born later that night, a manger for his bed. Wrapped in a blanket surrounded by hay, as he slept and rested his head. Mary rocked and held him gently, cradling the baby in her arms, with a mother's protective instinct to keep him safe from harm. This baby was very special, a gift sent from God above, so he could spread his message of a kindest kind of love. Some shepherds watched their sheep that night on a hillside quite nearby, when suddenly they saw a light blinding in the sky. The, they turned towards the light and could not believe their eyes. An angel appeared from before them, the light falling up the skies. The angel had some news to share about the birth of the special boy, Jesus, the Son of God, sent to spread love and joy. The angel told them where to go and not to be afraid to make their way to the stable where the baby Jesus stayed. On that night, far away in the east, three wise men looked up and gazed. And suddenly they spotted something strange. They stared confused and amazed. They saw a star of shining light that had not been there before. A star so they was special and they went into the wall. They studied their spot and soon discovered what the star was trying to show. The breath of a great ruler with its bright and shining glow. They decided to meet the new ruler, setting off on their way. But before they made their journey, a visit to King Herod they would pay. King Herod was very jealous and sent them off to find the king with orders to return when good news they could bring. The wise men began their journey, travelling through the night, making their way to Bethlehem with a star as their guiding light. They arrived at the stable to find their baby what to sight to behold. They brought him special gifts of I could set more and good. Every that night they had a dream where an angel did appear, a warning not to return to Herod or great danger would be near. They decided to protect the Son of God and they did not return to the palace as soon as the King Herod fell under threat and its action would be in callous. When the wise men did not return, King Herod got rather cross and ordered all the baby boys in Bethlehem to be killed to keep him boss. But Joseph had a dream one night. An angel appeared once more telling him to leave Bethlehem 
a message he could not ignore. He took them away to Egypt, somewhere where they could be safe. At last, for King Herod would find them, and the threat of danger passed. This is the story of Christmas that Christians hold so dear, which is why we like to celebrate on the 25th of December each year. Christmas is a time for family to be happy, merry and bright, but also a time for us to think about what happened to Bethlehem that night. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for all the good that has come out of this year. Within our church community, we thank you for the joys of weddings and births. We thank you for being able to return to church and for being able to worship together in person again. We thank you for Alban, the committee, youth and jam leaders, and everyone that has worked together to bring a little normality back into our lives. Within our country, we thank you for all those working through this pandemic to care for people. Whether that be in food banks, working with vulnerable people in the community, or in the COVID wards in our hospitals, or in any fashion. Thank you for giving them the drive to help people and their caring hands to do it with. We ask that you comfort those for who this time holds no celebration. The poor and hungry, the ill, the lonely and bereaved. Help us to reach out to those around us who will need extra support in the coming week. We pray for those who are alone this Christmas, whether they are without family or have had to isolate because of the pandemic. We ask that you surround them with love and let them know that you're with them whatever they will face. God, send your love throughout our world to those celebrating Christmas in secret for the, peer of, uh, sorry, for the fear of persecution. Please keep them safe. We pray that with the coming new year, all those around the world will feel refreshed and renewed after the hard year everyone has had. We pray all of this in your name. Amen. Today's reading is taken from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him, and assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. What 
What is your favourite thing about Christmas? Who is your favourite person in the Nativity Story? Jesus. Jesus. Mary. Jesus. Mary. Baby Jesus. Old. Jessica. Baby Jesus. <laughs> if you could get rid of one thing from a Christmas dinner, what would it be? Face. Stuffing. Vegetables. Brussels buns. The turkey. Vegetables. Brussels sprouts. Mashed potato, eat broccoli, Brussels sprouts. Who do you enjoy spending time with at Christmas? Family, family, my family, family, and family and friends, family, 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 dad, family, and family. If you were a visitor to the baby Jesus, what would you bring? Toys, baby clothes. Flowers, blanket, a baby ball, bottle, after <laughs> Which do you prefer, white lights or multicolored? Tinsel or no tinsel? Tinsel. 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 Quality Street or Celebrations? Quality Street. Celebration. Celebration. Quality Street. Celebration. Celebration. Celebrations. Bingler. Real Christmas tree or fake? Fake. 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 Real Christmas tree. Real. Real tree. Real. Fake. How does Christmas make you fake? Happy. 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 Happy.
I, I want to begin by saying huge thank you to our jammers. That was absolutely awesome. Thank you for telling us the Christmas story again. And thank you so much for your answers. Uh, isn't it wonderful that Jessica is part of the Christmas story? That's awesome. That's absolutely brilliant. There are lots of things that we enjoy about Christmas, aren't there? And one of the things that came through in that Q&A was how much we enjoy presents. We enjoy giving them, but we also enjoy receiving them. And you'll find in your pews this morning a little gift from our jammers for you, something to put on your tree uh, as a, a reminder not only of this service, but of different aspects of the Christmas story. If there isn't one near you, then let us know and we'll, we'll get one to you. We have loads of them. Uh, so thanks to the jammers for making those and presenting those little gifts uh, for this morning. I, I brought along with me a gift that, that my son gave me a, a number of years ago, uh, which sits on my desk. And um, it's, it's there, I think, to be a, a kind of a, a reminder of him. Uh, not that it looks at, at all like him, um, but it just reminds me uh, of his generosity uh, that he thought this would be a good thing to give to his dad. It's, it's one of those gifts that you just can't help but stroke. Uh, and in fact, the last time I, I did it, I did it like this. I looked like uh, one of those um, uh, strange people off a James Bond movie, you know. Um, but that's, it's just, it's very tactile. Uh, and it's lovely. And it sits on my desk and and actually, it reminds me of so much to do with the Christmas story. It reminds me about those shepherds who um, were getting on with their own business, uh, doing their, their job, um, and these angels appeared. Uh, that's one of the extraordinary parts of our Christmas story, isn't it? The angels appeared, and they told these shepherds what was happening. And the shepherds went off uh, to find out, and they celebrated, and they went off and told lots of other people. But this morning I thought, rather than just focusing on the shepherds, we would look at another group of people who feature in our Christmas story. And uh, this represents that group of people, uh, the wise men. We don't know how many there were. We, we tend to think in terms of three because there were three gifts, but we actually are not told how many there were. We know that they traveled a long, long distance. So it's more likely that there was a larger group of them traveling that distance through that dangerous territory. And they did so because they were convinced that something special had happened. A star appeared, and it was something that was out of the ordinary, not what they would have expected, and they saw that as a sign, and they followed it. And that brought them to Jerusalem, and they thought, well, if there's anybody in Jerusalem who'll know about this special event, surely it'll be Herod. So they made their way to talk to Herod. But we find out in the story that Herod wasn't really up to speed, and when he was told that there was another king being born, he was upset. Well, that's putting it mildly. He was in a rage. He didn't want there to be anybody else more important than him. He considered himself to be the most important person. And so he wanted to find out where the, this new king was, not so that he would worship him, but so that he might get rid of him. But the wise men followed the uh, directions of the star, and that brought them ultimately to Bethlehem and brought them to the place where Jesus was. And in the passage that uh, Tom read to us, there is a little statement that um, Matthew makes. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Just before we read that sentence, we're told that when they arrived at the house, they were overjoyed. There are three things I want you to take away about the wise men this morning. The first is this, that they rejoiced. Now, we know what that means because Christmas is a time when we rejoice. It's a time when we celebrate, when we have lots of fun, when we get together with family, we eat lots of lovely food, we exchange gifts. We know what it means to rejoice. 
They rejoiced because their journey had brought them to the place where Jesus was. And if there's to be one word that should describe our Christmas uh, engagement and our Christmas activities, it ought to be joy. It ought to be that rejoicing in what God has done for us in Jesus. So that's the first word, rejoice. What's the first word? Rejoice. The, the second word that, we, we, uh, that I want you to take away is, that, is what happened when they came in and saw the child. We're told that they bowed down or they fell down before him. They recognized they were in the presence of the king. They recognized that they were in the presence of someone very special, that this baby was like no other baby. And we know from the rest of the story that Jesus was, not, was, no, was no ordinary baby. He came from God to earth for you and me. He came to demonstrate God's love. He came to declare God's love. He came to give His life because of His love for us, that we might have forgiveness and that we might have new life. That's what Jesus came to do. And so, these wise men recognized Jesus. Christmas is full of color and full of decorations and all sorts of exciting and wonderful things. And they're all very good. But sometimes, just sometimes, all that color, all those decorations, all the wrappings and trappings, they can get in the way. And we can be so caught up in the wrappings and the trappings and the color and the decorations that we miss Jesus at the center of Christmas. So as well as rejoicing in the good news, we need to recognize Jesus in Christmas. And we need to be deliberate about that. We need to be intentional about that. We need to take time each day to say to God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that He came for us. We recognize that He is your Son and He is our Savior. So what was the first word again? Rejoice. Rejoice. The second word? Recognize. recognize. So the first word is? Rejoice. And the second word is? Recognize. And the third word is that when they fell down, they worshipped Him. And then we read that they opened up their treasures and they gave to Jesus gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These wonderful gifts. They gave generously. They gave abundantly. They gave in order to show their response to Jesus. We do our gift giving to one another, and that's a lovely thing to do. And we do that because Christmas is about giving, God giving to us. It's about His generosity to us. And so we want to reflect that generosity to one another and to those we don't know. So we have been able to do that through our partnership with Storehouse and our partnership with the Belfast City Mission. We do it throughout the year with Storehouse, with Christian Aid, with Tear Fund. There are lots of ways of being generous, lots of ways of responding to the love that God has shown us in Jesus. Christmas is not about receiving only. It's about giving. Giving what God has given to us. So three words to take away. The first word, rejoice. The second word, recognize. And the third word, respond. Here's the question. How will you respond to Jesus this Christmas? Will you respond like Herod, who was hard-hearted and angry because he didn't want to be anything other than the center of attention? He wouldn't give Jesus his place? Will you respond like that? Or will you respond like the wise men? 
Will you bow down and will you worship him? Will you, out of what God has given you, give to him your heart, your will, your life? For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. God in Christ gave us life. What will we give? Will we give our lives? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity this morning to hear again the, the story of Christmas. It's so familiar, and yet at times, because of that, Father, the details just slip past us. We thank you for the, the wise men, the magi, who made that journey, followed that star, and when they arrived at the place where Jesus was, they rejoiced. They were so excited. May we be just as excited about Christmas because it's a time to celebrate Jesus. Father, we thank you that when they entered into that house, they recognized Jesus as King, as Lord, and they bowed down. May we in the way that we go about our lives, recognize Jesus. May we bow down and worship. And as they responded with generosity, Father, will you help us to respond with generosity? To be people who are a blessing to others? To be people who share with others? And may we be a people who give our hearts, minds, souls, and all of our strength to you, because you have given us in Jesus the greatest gift of all, the gift of life, eternal, everlasting life. Thank you, Father, for your gift. Receive us now and receive our gifts and help us to be like you, to be generous, to be good, to be gracious one to the other and to the world in which you've placed us. Hear this, our prayer, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand and sing uh, our Christmas carol uh, this morning as we sing together once in Royal David City.
Join me, please, as we say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the grace and mercy and peace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with each one of you, now and always. Amen.